Yellow Person has been on a long quest to find treasure, but sadly, he's just realized that it is underneath water and he can't swim. So today, we're gonna try and help him out here. We wanna be able to swim upwards in small strokes, dive downwards, and fall slowly. We might even add in a water dash. Our main method for accomplishing all of this is gonna be through a moving object. We'll set it to 0.4 all around, have it as only movable, and the mode as speed and not acceleration. You might wanna change the frame of reference for motion to local. The benefit of the moving object method is that you can attach it to any kind of player character. It doesn't need to be the person. We'll then attach a speed sensor. The Y speed will be negative when we're falling or going downwards. We'll compare it to a negative value that you can adjust. We'll start with negative one and have that output go into the Y slot of the moving object. When our speed is greater than negative one, so whenever we're falling, then we would apply a force of one upwards on the moving object. It's not strong enough enough to lift our player, but it will decrease the speed at which they fall. We can't always be gliding around, so we want to have a way of determining when we're underwater and when we're not underwater. We'll use a flag for this. There are different ways to find out if you're underwater. If your water is all the same height, you can use a location sensor and check whether they're below a certain Y height. In this case, our entrance into the water is fairly small, so we can use two touch sensors. If the last one they touched is the bottom, then the bottom one will have us as water on. And if they're emerging from the water, the last one they'll touch is the top, so that one will set it to off. Now we can move our touch sensors into position. You'll want to set these to while press to avoid some problems down the road. Now that we have a way of checking whether we're in the water or not, we can adjust our slow falling. We can use a calculate node on attached to the comparison and the flag so that the signal of one only gets passed if the flag is on. We also move a little more slowly underwater. We'll have two more calculate nodons so that we can multiply the movement input before it gets to our person. When we're not underwater, we want it to be a regular input, so we'll leave it at one, since the not nodon will output a signal of one whenever it's active. When we are underwater, we want that multiplied input to be 0.7, so it'll decrease the speed at which we walk and move. So now we move regular speed when we're out of the water and we move more slowly when we're in the water. To make it more apparent when we've entered the water, we can add a trigger from zero node on onto the flag and attach an effect and a sound to it. We'll use the ambient loud water splash sound and the light effect so that there's a smooth transition and we're not looking through a bunch of boxes as we fall in through the water. already it feels pretty good we're descending slowly we have a smooth transition into the water and we move more slowly in the water our next step is going to be an upwards swimming stroke so we'll get a button input set to a and an and node on we'll check whether we're in the water or not and we'll be doing this for all of our in water inputs so if we're in the water and we press a then we'd like to apply a force to that moving box the constant nodon that you attach to the calculate nodon will tell you the amount of the force. Upward swimming strokes are usually pretty short, so we'll have a value of 10. And now let's test that out. When you press the A button, you'll go up a little bit and you'll play an animation. Now we can move on to our downward dive move. So we'll copy this basic setup and change the variable that determines our force to negative 20. And we'll attach that again to the Y input on the moving object. We'll have another calculate node on to get an animation input so that we can change the animation, in this case to the twirl. So now we can swim upwards and twirl to dive downwards. 
The next thing we're going to do is have it so that when you emerge from the water, you get a little boost so that you can clear a platform and jump out onto the ground instead of awkwardly wall jumping your way out of the water. This is really simple. You can copy the and and the force multiplier part of the other sections that we did, except this time we'll attach it to both of these touch sensors so that when you press that upward stroke button or the jump button and you're underwater, you'll receive a small upward force that helps you jump out of water and onto land. Lastly, we're going to add a forward dash in the water. And this one's a little bit more complex because personodons don't really like being pushed on the Z or X axes, so we'll need to apply a constant force. Force constant will have a positive 10, and for our animation, we'll do a 3 so that it looks like a punch. Now we can connect those to the moving object, this time on the Z input. The constant will adjust to negative 10 since Z negative is forward and connect the animation to the character. We'll use a flag node on to determine whether we're currently dashing or not. So when we're underwater and we press the designated button, we will be in a state where we're dashing. To control how long that goes on, we can have a counter. The counter will start at negative 35, and it'll count up until zero. Once it hits zero, it'll activate a not node on. The not node on will turn the flag off, so we'll stop the dash. The counter should take about half a second. The dash will go on for that duration. When we press the X button and we're under water, we want a trigger from zero node on to tell the counter to reset. But to prevent spamming, we'll also need the not to be active. This can be a little tricky, but what it does is prevents you from spamming the water dash button while managing it as a state. Now when you press the X button, you'll perform a forwards water dash that you can't spam or hold the button down for. Yellow person Odon is now free to go for the treasure. I realized that the logic is really messy here, so I tried to clean it up a little bit in the downloadable demo example. 